All right, so I'm sitting here watching the game. It's over. Like, it, it, it is fucking over. And <laughs> I missed the first quarter, but I've watched the entire game since then. And it, it, it's one of those things where I, I can pretty much tell the outcome of the game based off of the flow of the game. And it's the same recurring theme from the past couple losses. The Bulls are struggling to get anything. Like, everything they have to do takes a whole lot more effort. Meanwhile, other teams, they're, um, and they're showing the next eight games for the Bulls, Pistons, Cavs, Kings, Jazz, Suns, Raptors, Bucks, and Pelicans. Um, but my God, man. It, it, it's just one of those things where it becomes blatantly obvious. And B just took a shot and missed it. Throws it mid-range, jump shot. Nobody touches the ball. Taps to Thompson. Thompson gets a dunk. It is 102-112 with 233 left in the floor. Now they're trapping. Gets to B, gets it to Tyrese Maxey. Goes in for the layup. Zach knocks it out of bounds. I mean, I probably would have liked to see some trapping earlier, but my God, like, <laughs> they getting crushed out there. Like, <laughs> this shit ain't even funny, but it's funny to me. Wow, wide open shot. Wide open shot. Maxi takes it out, gives it to the B, and B gives it right back to him underneath the net. Easy two points. I mean, this is disgusting, man. And now, you know what? The Bulls are playing, like, with a little bit more intensity, with a little bit more sense of urgency. Why you couldn't play like that the entire game? Damn. Matisse Thibault, pick and roll, straight to the rim, slam that shit home. Good night. 104, 116, 150 left in the fourth quarter. Like... <laughs> But why, why they couldn't play with this intensity like the entirety of the game? I mean, their defense still sucks, but still. Iso ball, Kobe, step back three, mid-range shot, miss, rims out. Embiid on a perimeter with TT, Iso. I can't be the only person that, like, just watching this shit is just like, wow. Like, I had to watch it because I really wanted to see Harden and B to see what they look like to get, like, a um, a sense of what's to come. And I believe this is the last game of the season we play Philly. So they got the sweep. You know, they, 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 they get the sweep. But... They gave up, the Bulls gave up 37 points in the first quarter. <laughs> 37, bad defense. Now, they did a lot better in the second quarter. They did a whole lot better in the second quarter. But this ain't it. This, this is not it, people. Like... Caruso and Zoe are going to help. But you need a lot more than this. And, and Vooch didn't even play this game. Vooch did not even play this game. So it was all TT. And I know TT got into foul trouble in the third quarter. They had to sit him and let Mama Hips play for a minute and then went back to a little bit of small ball. But I mean, 
Like, what Billy Donovan should have done. Damn. Fadeaway jumper going out of bounds. Tyreek Maxey for three. Like, that... That... <laughs> Man, they just giving up the ball. It's pathetic, man. It's 30 seconds left, man. Let me, let me turn this shit off. Let me turn this shit the fuck off. Look. We, we cannot, this cannot be the standard, man. Okay, you know, back to the point I was trying to make, man. Look. Caruso and Zell, they'll help, but they're not saving this. Some guys that are getting played shouldn't be getting played. Vooch didn't even play this game, okay? Not enough floor spacing. I've noticed that without Zell. It, it, yeah, I get it. You know, Zach Levine been hurt, blah, 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 but... Every time I turn around, Zach and DeMar, when they're on the court together, it's like they in each other's space. Like, how are you supposed to... Okay, if Zach Levine is trying to get to the mid-range and DeMar DeRozan, like, okay, Zach's trying to get to the mid-range, right? He drives in, they cut him off. Okay, kicks the ball back out to DeRozan. Well, where's DeRozan trying to get? To the same area that Zach Levine just got to. There's already defenders there. What the hell can, you know, DeMar do? And vice versa, the only difference is Zach can knock down the threes. But they're not helping each other. They're not taking the pressure off of each other. It's just like, your turn, my turn. My turn, your turn. That, that's the game. And it's not effective. It, it's not effective. It's not helping them, and it's not helping the rest of the team. Again, Vooch didn't even play this game. And let's not pretend like Vooch would have made a huge difference because he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Philly's just better. They're just freaking better. Late game situations, team was giving up rebounds. Body language was just bad. This team looked defeated. They just looked defeated, man. And it wasn't like just any, it's just like, man, we just can't beat these dudes. And they're right, they can't. I thought they might do a little bit better without Seth being out there because Seth gashed him like, one or two of those games. And I felt like without the extra floor space that he provided, I thought, you know, they would have a better shot. Now, you might be like, well, James Harden can knock down threes. Yeah, that's true. But James Harden gets threes differently than Seth. Seth is a shooter. James Harden is a scorer. And a lot of what Harden does is off the dribble. I figured, okay, maybe you could put Io or somebody on him and make his life a little bit harder and maybe they won't have those threes. You know, it's a little bit easier to guard when the guy isn't moving around the court like Seth will. Nothing. Nothing doing. Nothing doing, man. Tristan Thompson had him beat all night and he couldn't stop him. Now, and I know I, I kind of skipped this point earlier. This is what I really wanted to say. I would have liked to see Billy Donovan make this adjustment. Because this is what I noticed. When Embiid set and DeAndre Jordan came in, the lead shrunk. I would have liked for them to try to get DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine in the game at the same time while Embiid was on the bench. Let those guys cook and get this team back into the game. Because during the minutes when Embiid isn't on the court, if you can keep the game even during that time, even when Embiid comes back, you give yourself a chance. Every single time DJ got out there on the court, the lead shrank. 
It didn't matter if they were up 15. They were down single digits by the time MB came back in. That would have been the adjustment, like, rotation-wise. I would have liked to have seen more than that. Also, the rotation that has DeMar in with the bench unit it has to stop, man. There's just simply not enough shooting. You cannot have a primary, primarily mid-range shooter in the game with a bunch of guys that don't space the floor. I lie why you need Zach. I mean, yeah, not Zach, but Io. I lie, this is why you need Zoe. Okay, Caruso is like 38, 36% this year. You need those guys out there to give you a little bit of cushion or pull a little bit of the defense away to punish because you got Derrick Jones, you got Troy Brown, you got Tristan Thompson, okay? None of these guys are phenomenal um, three-point shooters. It's not helping you win games. You could maybe make this work if you put Zach out there because Zach can score from three. And so the lack of spacing really doesn't affect him because he can play outside in, he can play inside out. But without Zoe, without Caruso, you really got to put some spacing around him. Hell, if they wanted to play Matt Thomas, I wouldn't have been too mad because at least he can knock down threes. It would give you something. You know what, on second thought, don't play Matt Thomas. He don't play defense. Forget I said that. <laughs> Got a little ahead of myself there. <laughs> Speaking of defense, all these guys that I mentioned do the same fucking thing, man. None of these guys can shoot. They all allegedly play defense, but they're all too small. Are you trying to play Derrick Jones at small ball five against Embiid? Um, I don't know... I mean, I get creativity. I, I get, you know, trying to try something new, but my God, man, like, what is this team supposed to do against MB? With Derrick Jones as the five, like, what? What? You don't have the shooters. You don't have the, 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 the movement like a Golden State to try to pull and be out of what he wants to do or to at least make them think like, okay, we might need to go small ball to match up with them. You don't have that. You just simply don't, man. Questionable things all throughout this game. Questionable things. And as much as I would like to say, yeah, wait till we get Zoe back. Wait till we get Crusoe. Like I said, they'll help, but they're not stopping and be. They're just not. DeRosa tried to take two charges this game to MB. Fouls on both of them. Long rotations. Guys play defense for one play and they think that's it. Their job is done. They're giving up on plays. And you got people that want to show, oh, DeMar DeRose is such a leader. He's chewing out his teammates like, a, you know, he's being a leader. That's not being a leader, man. You're not even playing defense. You're not even crashing the boards. Be the, be the leader that you want your followers to be. If you want those guys to go out there and support you and play defense and do all these other things, you do it. You start. The team will go as you go. If you get out there and you provide on-ball pressure, you play hardcore defense, you start your game there, the rest of the team will go. That, that will set a tone. That will trickle down. Because you're not going to be out here and it's like, well, shit, DeMar's playing defense. Zach's playing defense. I can't be out here next to these guys not playing defense. I'm not going to get any minutes. I can't be out here not crashing the boards. It's a trickle-down effect.
But unfortunately, the Chicago Bulls have let this, you know, fester and grow for way too long. This is the team now. I was watching highlights of Lonzo early this um, year. Um, and I was like, wow, they look a little bit different. <laughs> you know, they played a little bit different those first, like, 10 or so games, 15 games or so. It's like, this is a completely different team from the way this looked. Hell, even looking back at the preseason games, they look completely different. Ball movement, you know, passing all over. Like, it just was a better-looking game than this. Better-looking product. Even effort on defense. That team ain't here anymore. And we could talk about, oh, what Lonzo Caruso could do. I'm telling you, neither one of them are guarding Embiid. Hell, part of the reason Zo is where he is right now is because he's had to guard Embiid. He's had to guard Randall. Okay, he's had to guard these guys. KD, guys who he really shouldn't have to D up consistently, but you don't have you don't have anybody else. You just don't. So, Bulls lose another game. Five straight. We can't get the 40 wins, man. We can't get there. Now, you got Detroit coming up. You better beat Detroit. But, hell, Detroit has won like five straight games, I think. That's not an easy win anymore. We don't even know. We don't even know if we could beat that team. But either way, this is where we're at. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Unfortunately, somehow, some way, the Bulls have found a way to make prune juice. And hopefully that prune juice will flush out this bullshit this offseason. Clean the entire system out. And we can start next year on a better foot. Because this ain't it. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Y'all have a good night. Peace.